Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, February 18th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about the 2022 Senate elections based off of President Joe Biden's approval rating per state. Taking a look at the uh, morning consult polls that have just been released from November 2021, and I say just been, uh, not in a means of being misleading. I typically say that when I'm talking about polls, but it is our most recent uh, nationwide coverage when it comes down to political polls and approval rating polls for President Joe Biden. I've actually used other websites such just civics and race to the White House in order to figure out state by state polling data. But for some reason, I don't find it as accurate. I think, you know, a lot of it comes down to the fact that there are a bunch of outlier polls that really deter me from using it as a general site. For instance, the most recent poll from California shows Joe Biden down a percentage point. Realistically, that simply isn't possible. Looking at the amount of Democratic Party uh, representation there is across the state of California, it is really hard to believe that there is a negative one disapproval rating net in the state of California when many other polls have completely disproven that. And that is also what the morning consult data seems to be putting forth to us. Uh, looking at the Joe Biden state by state, I think that uh, we will get a better understanding of the impact of Joe Biden's approval rating on many of these swing states and what that actually means when it comes down to the general election. But it also may be interesting to see that the GOP isn't performing to the best of their ability, considering that Joe Biden is heavily disapproved of in many of these states, yet simply is holding on to a significant portion of the vote, at least the Democratic Party is. So, Taking a look at our map here, we're going to be using, again, the morning consult numbers from November 1st, 2021. Unfortunately, we don't have a more recent poll. What we find here is that 44% in the average state, 44% of suburban voters approve of Joe Biden's uh, job performance, down six points from the first three months of office. And those who disapproved increased eight points, going up to 52%. So it's a 14-point decline in Biden's net approval rating in the suburbs, and it's pretty significant nationwide as well. Taking a look at the difference, what you will find is that in July 2021, he was just, he is approved of by a much higher amount. In April of 2021, it was even more a higher amount. States such as Missouri, Ohio, Iowa, Kansas, Montana, uh, North Carolina approved, Florida approved of Joe Biden's performance. These are all states that Donald Trump won in the 2020 election. Now, it's gotten a lot worse for President Biden. As the months proceeded, uh, we are now in October 2021. This is actually published on November 1st, 2021. What we are looking at is a map that is much more reflective of the 2016 type national environment, which is uh, very interesting to say the least, but uh, could be setting us up for some type of uh, interesting result in 2022. So moving through some of these states, some of them I do think are going to be quite surprising simply because there are some states that are just outliers. The one in specific I do want to address before we get into it is the state of Vermont that shows Joe Biden down negative eight. Now I'm going to actually reflect that in the Senate map, even though I do think in a sense it could be viewed as disingenuous. Um, I do want to preface this by saying that I'm not going to exclude any data. There would be in one hand, you know, for me, an executive decision to go ahead and uh, move the uh, state of Vermont into the safe Democratic credit column. There's no real point in arguing that, but Again, we are using the data from the morning consult, and I'm not going to pick and choose which states to go ahead and move forward with, even though at the end of the day, it is pretty misleading to keep Vermont as a state that is uh, likely, uh, sorry, that is uh, moving it out from a state that has you know, not been polled. I think it's uh, only fair game to include it all together. So in characterizing many of these states, what you might notice is that there isn't every single state on the 2022 Senate elections. Uh, if we want to take a look at my most recent projections, though, what I find here is that the Republicans are at 52 and the Democrats are at 48. I think it'll be a little bit more interesting than that and a little bit larger of a Republican victory. Uh, and we'll go ahead and move uh, from the West Coast all the way over to the East Coast, just simply because there's more competitive seats on the eastern half of the United States. So starting off in the state of Washington, this is a state where Joe Biden is up about 11 points that keeps it only in the likely Democratic column. The state of Oregon is up nine, again, another likely state. California is up 18. Again, this is a reason why I don't necessarily trust, uh, you know, polling sources that put the Democrats down in the state of California. It simply doesn't make sense. The state of Alaska is negative 26. That's honestly quite believable. The state of Hawaii is only plus one. So that actually is a state that could very well have gone in the opposite direction. But keep in mind, Hawaii of many states is actually very, very, very difficult to pull. The state of Idaho is negative 24. I think that one makes a lot of sense. Utah is negative 28. The state of Vermont here, night, uh, pretty bad for the you know, 10, 12, 13 point shift, uh, actually maybe even larger than that at this point in time. Uh, it sort of makes sense that Colorado could be narrowly holding on by a thread, and I think that's what we might see in 2022, depending on who the Republican nominee is. The state of North Dakota is negative 25. Again, never really was going to be competitive, negative 23 in the state of South Dakota. The state of Kansas is surprisingly enough, negative seven. That is something that's really a bit of a shocker, considering the rest of the nation that Arizona and Nevada disapprove of Biden more than Kansas does. But again, you know, interesting states, interesting times. Again, it could be a state that is a bit more 
more difficult to pull. And we're going to stop here on Oklahoma at negative 38. So one thing that you can gauge already is that there are two pickups for the Republican Party based off of this map. You have Nevada and you have the state of Arizona. One thing that I do want to point out is that these flips are not going to be isolated. These are going to be uh, part of a continuous trend as we traverse the rest of this political climate, the rest of the map here, um, moving over towards the northeastern region. Uh, Arizona and Nevada aren't necessarily shockers. I am more shocked by the amount that the Democratic Party and Joe Biden is disapproved of statewide. Uh, and I use them, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, sort of uh, together, even though I probably shouldn't, considering that Democrats are performing a lot better in Nevada and Arizona based off of what these polls are actually telling us. But I think one thing that is very clear is that the Republican Party is not winning in the way that they should be. When President Obama was disapproved of, the GOP won almost all of those voters that disapprove of Joe Biden. Right now, I would say, first of all, there probably is a bit of the population that is left-leaning, Democratic voting, that does disapprove of Joe Biden, and they will express that the same way there were Republicans in that position. I mean, Donald Trump was down eight points nationwide on Election Day, but he didn't lose the election by eight points nationwide. Republicans were down with Donald Trump by, you know, at some point, 19 points, but that didn't result in a a super large victory for the Democratic Party, but rather a more tame one. Looking at this map, I would say that it is a testament to, uh, number one, the fact that Joe Biden is extremely unpopular in many of these swing states, but also a testament to the Democratic Party's ability to hold on and retain many of these key competitive states, including Nevada and including Arizona. It is entirely possible, even with being down negative 13, the Democrats do win there. I don't think it's the most likely outcome at this point in time, but it's certainly not something that is outside the realm of possibility, which should be a major warning for the GOP. Colorado doesn't go. I don't think that expect uh, that uh, result ended up sh uh, shocking too many people. The state of Kansas is quite surprising to see. Again, Kansas is more left-leaning, per se, than the state of Arizona and Nevada in this situation but again, it could just be faulty polling, maybe one type of inaccuracy, who knows at this point in time. But uh, generally speaking, I think this broad data set does seem to match a lot of the other data. And I think that moving forward with it is the fairest way to go. So moving over to neighboring to Kansas, the state of Missouri, we have the state uh, with a negative net approval of just negative five. Now that puts Missouri into the lean column. I don't know how this happened. I think this is pretty shocking to say the least. But again, it could just be faulty polling or it could be maybe that Joe Biden has some type of support in Missouri that we are just simply not seeing. That's always a possibility, but I would say probably far from reality. The state of Arkansas is negative 14. Again, I don't necessarily trust that number entirely, but these are probably the least consequential races to be getting wrong. Uh, one thing that I do want to say, though, negative 14 is a lot more believable than being down by a point in California. So someone could technically raise, you know, why are you using the morning consult if you didn't believe the race of the White House numbers that so show the Republicans up in California? Well, I will say, first of all, you know, while they are equal, equal and lean, uh, that also means that they shouldn't be off by, you know, different amounts. California is significantly off, whereas Arkansas is probably only off by maybe 10 points. California was off by, uh, you know, what we see now, 18 to 19 points, and probably uh, compared to the 2020 election, about 30 points off. Uh, moving down to the state of Louisiana, back to normal, negative 27, the state of uh, Alabama. Uh, this is a state that has negative 21. So again, these are not shocking by any stretch. The state of Kentucky, negative 17. The state of Indiana, negative 21. Uh, so that's pretty much the core few states for the GOP. South Carolina included negative 17. So what we have already is the uh, Republican already up at 46 and the Democrats up at 41, 13 remaining states to characterize. The state of Iowa, which I think this is definitely one of the more shocking things to come out of this, is that Iowa actually has a net approval rating of 1%. Again, I don't trust this to be the gold standard. I think that there definitely is something, uh, some type of discrepancy when it comes down to the morning consult polls, but I don't think it's nearly as wrong as uh, some of the other groups. And also, this is one of the very, very, very few pollsters that does state-by-state -state polling on a widespread margin. Uh, many of these states will do individual ones, and they'll be added all together. I don't know if I want to go that route. I think the morning consult, if they use the same methodology and the same line of questions, in many of these states that I'd be more inclined to use this as a means of establishing for my data. But again, I'm not going to continue arguing why I'm deciding to use the data from the morning consult. Neighboring Illinois is plus 10, sort of similar to Washington and Oregon, Democratic leaning states that seem to have been impacted by the national pushback on President Biden. Uh, the state of Florida, I don't think this is a shocker to too many people, disapproved by 11 points. That goes back into the likely column, just as it is in my own prediction. Uh, moving over to the state of North Carolina, negative eight, another state state in the likely column, whereas the state of Georgia goes to the uh, Republicans by just four points, net approval rating of negative four. So um, moving over to the Northeast, I'm sure you can gauge how many or guess how many of these states are going to end up going to the GOP, but 
We have a pretty long ways to go, and not pretty long ways, but a pretty significant amount of states to characterize with very large populations, and I think it's worth uh, going ahead and tackling into that right now. But the uh, mid-update so far, 49 seats for the Republicans. They need two more for a majority. Democrats are at 43, and they need seven more for a majority. So going ahead and characterizing the remaining eight possible states, we'll start off actually with the state of Wisconsin, move to Ohio, then Pennsylvania, Maryland, New York, Vermont, uh, Connecticut, then the state of New Hampshire, which probably won't be that surprising considering the rest of these swing states. So far, the flips are Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. And the flips in favor of the Democrats are Iowa, surprisingly enough. Moving over to the state of Wisconsin, this is a state with a disapproved uh, net for uh, President Biden of negative 11. That's not really shocking to me. I, I don't think so. I think this is a result that uh, if it came up to be the Senate result, sure would be shocking. But right now, in terms of the approval rating statewide, not so much. The state of Ohio is negative 10. I am surprised to see Wisconsin a little bit more uh, right-leaning than, uh, than the state of Ohio. But again, some things just could be a little bit off, or maybe the state of Ohio is a bit more uh, resistant to shifting heavily in favor of the GOP, whereas Wisconsin wasn't really. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania, negative three for uh, Biden, which means the GOP does win there by a lean margin. The state of Maryland shouldn't be too surprising. Safety, uh, plus 22. state of New York, surprisingly enough, is only plus two nation, uh, sorry, statewide, which means the Democrats would only narrowly win there. I think that is one of the more uh, interesting parts of this. Uh, it's also a state that should be hold pretty heavily and the fact that it's only plus two means that there's something a bit off there for the democratic party the state of connecticut is plus 12 so that goes into the likely democratic column and in the final two states you might be shocked to see that they are actually flipped in terms of what your expectation is Joe Biden is approved of in New Hampshire, a longtime swing state that the Democratic Party funneled millions of dollars in in 2020 in order to win, but the state of Vermont, a state that has always gone with the Democratic Party since Bill Clinton's election by extremely large amounts, actually disapproves of Joe Biden by about eight percentage points statewide. So that negative eight actually props up the G GOP to 53 seats in the United States Senate, counteracting the loss in the state of Iowa. I think this is actually one of the most insane maps that I have seen altogether to see Missouri, you know, closer than the state of Ohio, to see Missouri closer than Wisconsin, to see Vermont more pro-Republican than the state of Missouri, to see the state of Iowa more pro-Democratic than the state of Pennsylvania or than the state of uh, Arizona or Nevada or even Georgia. Uh, just a lot of weird things going all around to see the state of New York less left-leaning than the state of Wisconsin is right-leaning, or the state of Arizona is right-leaning. A lot of different things across the nation are just very, very shocking based off of the morning consult polls, but a lot of it does end up being accurate. I mean, when you look at Idaho, when you look at North and South Dakota, Utah, Oklahoma, Oregon, Washington, Indiana, Kentucky, Alabama, Louisiana, South Carolina, a lot of these make sense, right? A lot of these characterizations make sense. Maryland, Connecticut, California, uh, Alaska, a lot of them do make sense. There are a few things that I do think is a bit off. But again, the final numbers here, if we were to just go ahead and expand it, uh, get rid of margins here. Republicans are at 53. The Democrats are at 47. The GOP, again, to reiterate, picks up Nevada, Arizona, uh, Georgia, and the state of Vermont. The Democrats pick up the state of Iowa. Surprisingly enough, I think that's, again, one of the most shocking things that has come out of this map. Um, but that's it. I mean, 53 to 47 definitely isn't the worst thing for the Democratic Party, but it certainly isn't good. They need to hold on to the majority if they want to have any shot at winning the majority past 2024, considering that you're going to see people up such as John, Chest John Tester in Montana or Joe Manchin in West Virginia, Kirsten Cinema in Arizona, ample opportunities for the GOP to make pickups in 2024. And if Democrats already go into that being out of the majority, they more than likely, and I mean this you know, with 99% certainty, will not win it back in 2024. But then again, I could be in entirely proven wrong. So final map again, 53 to 47. I think that we shouldn't be using approval rating polls as our standard, but I think it does provide a bit of context about why Democrats might be down in certain states and why they might be up in other ones. Uh, one thing that I do want to remind you of is the fact that the GOP is not performing to the best of their ability. This map would be giving the GOP more seats than I currently allocate to them. 52 to 48 is not as good as 53 to 47. Looking at many of these states, it shows that a bunch of them should be in play. A bunch of them should be lockdowns for the GOP if it was simply based on approval rating. But on the other hand, it isn't just based on approval rating. It comes down to who you're running. It comes down to who's backing you. It comes down to who's the incumbent. The Democrats have every single one of their incumbents running in contested races. The Republicans, however, do not. Republicans don't have anyone in, uh, in Pennsylvania. They don't have anyone in North Carolina or Ohio, states that have typically in the past gone to the Democratic Party or have been competitive but GOP victories that they simply don't have there anymore. 
The Republicans lucked out with their retirement in Missouri and Alabama. They likely won't make a difference, but there is always a weird possibility. I mean, Doug Jones won in Alabama, and Jason Kander almost won in 2016 in Missouri. So weirder things have happened in American politics, but generally speaking, we shouldn't be expecting that to happen. So final map here, 53 for the Demo Republicans, 47 for the Democrats. Republicans win back Senate control simply because Joe Biden is unpopular in many, many of these states. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.